Welcome everyone, my name is Brendan Snyder, thank you for joining me. First off, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already clicked the subscribe button, please do. I'm attempting to reach my goal of a thousand subscribers and you clicking the button would really help. Okay, now if I said that I want to talk about a vocalist today who's fronted some of the biggest names in the rock industry. Uh, we've got classic rock greats Foreigner, we've got guitar wizard Ronnie Montrose and his band Montrose, and then we've got Carmine of Pieces band, King Cobra. You'd probably say, wow, you know, who's this singer? I must know who he is. You know, such famous bands must be a famous singer. And when I say his name, Johnny Edwards, most people go, who? Right? So I've always thought of Johnny Edwards as the most famous unknown singer in rock music. And I'd like to shine a light on both him and the albums that he recorded with these bands that might have gone, uh, you know, sort of under the radar at the time. And so if we jump all the way back in Johnny Edwards' career, he got his start in, in the early 80s in a glam rock, glam metal group called Buster Brown. And they released two albums early on, Loud and Clear in 1984 and Sign of Victory in 1985. And I've only ever seen these on vinyl. I don't know that they ever came out on CD. I certainly hope they get reissued someday because I think they're well worth checking out. Uh, if you can find them, do pick them up. Also of note, the band featured James Kotak on drums. He's uh, most famous uh, for having been in Kingdom Come, uh, Wild Horses, which was another great late 80s, early 90s hair band, and of course, most famously for the Scorpions. Um, now at that point, Johnny Edwards and uh, James Kotak were recruited by none other than Ronnie Montrose to front his group, Montrose. Uh, you can see the album there behind me with the big letter M on it that they recorded in 1987. And um, also of note, the album featured former bandmate of Ronnie Montrose's Glenn Letch, who was also with him in Gamma, which is another great band. If you don't know who they are, check them out. This song, M for Machine, which was the first single from the album, was also featured in the movie Robocop, which is why I'm wearing this shirt today. And so right off the bat there, you've got uh, Johnny Edwards playing with some really big name artists like James Kotak, um, Ronnie Montrose. Uh, they get a song in the movie Robocop, which is a huge blockbuster at the time and, you know, still a cult classic to these days. So, you know, you've probably heard him even if you didn't know you were listening to him. Now, following this, uh, in 1988, he joins King Cobra and they put out this album three or titled three in 1988 and it features on it a uh, guitarist JK Northrup and he's gonna figure in a little bit later and we'll talk about him in a bit he's another one of those guys that would replace a lot of famous guitar players and bands and he never quite got to do himself either just like Johnny Edwards I don't know maybe one day I'll do a whole video just on uh, JK Northrup who certainly deserves it um, but following uh, the King Cobra uh, album and tour and things like that at the time in 1990, he got the big call, the call that, you know, lots of rock musicians wait for. Mick Jones of Foreigner calls him up and says, hey, Lou Graham has left the band and I need somebody to front Foreigner. And so they record one album together, Unusual Heat, that came out in 1991. And, you know, you got to remember in 1991, this was uh, grunge and alternative rock were breaking. You know, Nirvana had put out uh, Nevermind already, Pearl Jam, Stone Temple Pilots, right, were taking over the scene. And so even though first single off that album, Low Down and Dirty, did climb all the way to number four on the mainstream rock charts, the album as a whole just really didn't do much. And I don't know if it had to do specifically with this, but if you've ever seen the video for Low Down and Dirty, the image that's within it, at least Johnny Edwards' image, and I don't know if it was him or the band or maybe even a stylist that did this, but he had the big hair, he was wearing spandex. All of that was really popular for the late 80s metal scene but it just obviously didn't translate in the early 90s when uh, grunge and alternative was breaking. So unfortunately, the album didn't do very well, certainly didn't do the sales that Foreigner was known for, and it just kind of uh, fell off the radar at that point. Now, as I said, you know, the industry was changing at that point. So uh, Johnny Edwards decides to shift gears and he forms this group here, Royal Jelly. And also of note in this band here, um, and that came out in 1994, was Danny Stagg, who, as I mentioned, uh, Wild Horses. He was from the band Wild Horses. So again, another reason to check out that really great early 90s hair band. And then Jeff Clavin uh, of Kingdom Come uh, on drums, uh, taking over as he did for James Kotak when James Kotak left. Now this album was on Island Records, so big label. 
Matt Wallace produced it, so big name producer. But again, it just didn't do well. And I think uh, partly just due to the sound, you know, when I got it at the time, I was looking for the sound of Montrose, Foreigner, King Cobra, what I knew Johnny Edwards for, and this doesn't sound like it. So again, the album just kind of disappeared without a trace. And then it's not until 2001 when he finally releases a bunch of demos that he had recorded with J.K. Northrup, this album here. Um, and they put that out, which is a fantastic album when you listen to it. And if you can hear any of it in the background, it's what we're playing. Um, it's just really great, solid rock and roll. I think it's up there on par with uh, the Foreigner stuff. Um, but obviously it just they didn't get picked up at the time nobody was interested in those demos uh, at that time so it went unreleased until 2001 it finally got a release and it actually made a little bit of waves at the time just because of how great it was and these two guys formerly having been in some big bands and in 2004 jk northrop reached out to johnny edwards and said hey i'd like to record a whole album with you a brand new album but unfortunately um, johnny edwards turned him down and from that point forward uh, Johnny has really just been associated in uh, the telecommunications world where he's working professionally and not doing much within the music world. He has appeared occasionally on a JK uh, Northrop album, uh, you know, just one song here. He has sung with Paul Shortino. So he's popped up here and there, but he hasn't done anything outright under his name or a full album, which is unfortunate. I hope he comes back because, again, I just think he's a really great vocalist. He's due. Um, you know some attention. I hope that this uh, review brings a little bit to him if nothing else to check him out or these great bands and these albums that they did with him that might have gone under the radar that you didn't really note uh, the first time around. All right I hope you enjoyed this and if you did please remember to comment like and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts and I hope everyone has a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.